Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. In this session, I want to further expand on some of the phone capabilities that we talked about in the previous video, specifically more in regards to personalization and customization. There are some differences even between the tablet and the phone client, so I want to talk just a little bit about some of the customization capabilities and items to keep in mind when you start customizing. First, let's go ahead and hop back into the application and just refresh you on some of the differences between this and the tablet client as well as this and the mobile client. So for example, if I'm on an account record, if you look at this right here, I see header information that would normally be displayed on the account. Now in the web client, I can have many different fields in the header and I can edit those fields as we're moving forward. Those header fields will also transfer over into the tablet client where I will see as many of the header fields that I have listed in the tablet interface as well. From a phone interface, you are limited to only four. So you will only see the first four fields that have been added to the header when you put those in there. So that's very important to note when you start customizing specifically for the phone client to make sure that anything is that is of importance is being put up in the first four options. That's also going to be very true when you start talking about views and working with views from a presentation standpoint as well, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. So let's go in and review from a customization perspective how changes that you make in the CRM web application will then be pushed over and rendered from a tablet application standpoint. So from a mobile perspective, the entities that you want to have displayed on the mobile in the mobile applications, whether it's tablet or phone, need to first be enabled for mobile. That hasn't necessarily changed. So if you go into your customizations interface and you open up your solutions, you now have the capabilities to look at the entity page. And on the entity page, when you scroll down, you will see an option down there for Outlook and mobile. You will still have the enable for mobile express. Now, remember, that's the previous version of the phone client. That's the more traditional phone express where you just have kind of of the, the very slim lined information. The enable for mobile is what is going to enable this information to be displayed not only on a tablet application, but also in the new updated phone client. So any entity that you want to work with does have to show up within here. So the other thing to remember is you now have the capabilities to have multiple dashboards available to users when using the tablet application. Now this could be system dashboards or this could be personal dashboards, but that does need to be enabled at a dashboard level within the application to allow that. So if I were, for example, looking at a solution and I were to go into dashboards, this will list all of the dashboards, obviously, that I have associated with this, with this particular CRM instance. And so what I can do from this perspective is if I open up the dashboard, dashboard and I go to properties there is now a specific option here that says enable for mobile when you click on enable for mobile this is going to enable this dashboard to be displayed not only in the mobile uh, in the tablet client but also in the phone client so it's a universal change that's going to allow that information to push over regardless of what um, mobile application or mobile client version they're using one of the first things you have to keep in mind when you start talking about customizations and, and specifically the differences between the web client and the mobile client is really when it comes into and talking about forms. As we've mentioned, forms are going to have a very different presentation method than what you would see from the web client versus the tablet client versus the phone client. It still uses the same customization interface. So I'm still going to go into, for example, the account entity form and I'm going to open that up and still use the same editor. It's just going to reflect those changes differently based upon the client that I'm using. Remember that from a mobile perspective, now this is tablet and phone, you are limited to 75 fields and 10 lists or five tabs from a display standpoint. And so if we look at, you know, for example, this form as we're going through, here's my summary information with my account address information as well as, you know, additional address info. And then here's some of those individual lists and items that we have. Here's the details item. And then as we go into some of the different other perspectives that you'll see within there, you know, here's my social pane, which would have notes and activities. I would have my related opportunities, my recent contents. Each one of those is considered a list. And so you have a maximum of 10 lists and or 75 fields that you can work with or a maximum of five tabs. So one of the things to keep in mind is simply just hiding something on a form. So hiding a list or hiding an object on a form isn't going to 
prevent it from showing up on either the tablet or the phone client. It's still going to count against that quota. Even though it may or may not be displayed, it's still something that is considered part of that quota. So items further down on the list are not going to show. From a tablet perspective, that's just kind of how things are. So you have to remember to really try to lay the forms out to make that work. From a phone perspective, we do have a little bit more control over that. If I were to go in and click on like for example a field and if I had a field that I did not want to show up on the form I could go ahead and double click on that field and down on the bottom as part of the spring update that we will see is I have the availability to choose available on phone if I uncheck available on phone this particular item will no longer show up on the phone client it'll still render on the tab client but it doesn't show up on the phone client and it does more specifically doesn't count against our quota on the phone client um, tabbed or, you know collapse and expanded tabs they still count against your quota hidden items still count against your quota the only way to truly have it not count against your quota and not have it display on a phone is to open up the properties and this could be done at a tab level Level, at a section level or at a field level and then just uncheck that available on phones and once that option has been checked then that will not show up on the phone client so there you have kind of an overview of some of the customization considerations you need to keep keep in mind specifically around mobile client remember that it, you know from a customization perspective it's not all that different from what you're doing now you just have to be aware of how some of those customizations and how some of those objects are going to be reflected in the tablet client again this is Derek I just want to say thank you very much for watching and we hope to see you in a future video